This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. Community engagement is all the rage these days. Simon Fraser University, for example, uses it as their mantra and as their public calling card. But when the rubber hits the road, how many leaders in our community really understand what that phrase means? What does community engagement actually entail? Are there any prices? A good example is the current uh, little mini war that's been going on for a while uh, with the Vancouver Park Board and 23 community associations. All but six have bought in to the new program. The new program says, let's take this card, there's my card to go swimming at the Vancouver Aquatic Center and occasionally run on the treadmill, let's take that and change that for a one pass which allows you to use all the community associations around town. Sounds good, doesn't it? What could be wrong with that? Oh, the only problem is, in doing that, we might also destroy all of those associations of volunteer people who live in those communities and have been organizing volleyball games and bingo games and, and daycare and so on all these many years. Is it just a cash grab? Well, six months ago, we had Eric Harms from uh, Hastings Community Center talking about this very issue, but the, the issue is heated up again because of some potential uh, lawsuits, and we're delighted to have on the show today Jesse Joel, who is uh, the head of the... Hillcrest. Thank you. The head of the Hillcrest Community, Community Center. Actually, you have a much more serious title, and I couldn't decipher all the initials. Oh, it's the Riley Park Hillcrest Community Association. There you go, Riley Park Hillcrest Association. Yeah, Jesse, thanks for coming in. Look, uh, is this a cash grab? Absolutely. Absolutely. There yeah. is, uh, it's a cash grab uh, wrapped up in a flashy PR gimmick called a one card. And in effect, it is in our opinion, um, a way to silence and crush the voice of the community. What, why would you want to do that? Why would the park board, in all their benign kindness, why would they, why would they, why, yeah. why, of course, yeah. yeah, why would they want to silence anybody? Because it's the community. The communities are the only ones that have kept the park board and affect the city of Vancouver accountable for the yes. last fifty up to eighty years. In the case of Hastings Community Center, yes. And if you remove that voice of the community you then are able to do whatever you want, whenever you feel like it, and you're accountable to no one. As I have enjoyed playing Solomon in many situations, mm -hmm. I don't understand why the park board couldn't have figured out that you could have a one card situation and still maintain the integrity of all these associations. Absolutely. Uh, but that's not what they're doing. No. They're asking, they're demanding that all these associations uh, disassociate, that they dissolve. Well, it started with the Parks Board manager and uh, the city manager, Penny Ballum, yes. arriving unannounced, uh, telling uh, over a year ago now. What do you mean arriving unannounced? So they showed up at one Just, of the buildings? <laughs> yeah. We had a, uh, yeah. it started with roundtable discussions yes. on how to move forward collaboratively. Yes. Uh, the collaborative discussions were then taken over by the city manager, yes. who had her PowerPoint then presented which was already ready, and oh, man. it started off with, um, we don't really need you folks. Has anybody ever figured out, just as a sidebar, that mm -hmm. PowerPoint is one of the great evils <laughs> of the modern era? The moment someone yards out a PowerPoint, I go into a deep coma. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as somebody pulls out a PowerPoint unannounced, yeah. I think to myself, yeah. hmm, somebody's mm. been busy at work. Yes, exactly. And what, and what exactly are they trying to get at? Well, they got yeah. to their point pretty quickly. Yes. And their point was, we will control from now on, forget the last 50 years, yes. or 80 years in some cases, okay. and we will control all the programming, we will collect all your money, and you will become an advisory council 
you will not really have any power, you won't really have any say, and if you disagree, well, we'll make note of that in our book, and you'll be fine to keep doing that. So, so let's look at the little old lady and at the teen who both volunteer because they see this building, this place in the community, and they are drawn to it for whatever reason, and they go in one day by accident or their cousin does something there, it plays badminton or something, and they find themselves getting drawn more and more in and they participate. Isn't that what keeps us alive? Isn't that what neighborhoods are about? It's what community centers are about. Yeah. Community centers are literally the heart of a community. It's where seniors come to grow, yeah. can reconnect with the next generation. Yeah. It's where children go to grow into you know, productive adults and community members. And what's happening is an all-out attack on the community centers. Now, in the very beginning, you actually said that 16 or all the rest of the centers were on side. There are 23 that I know of. 23, and, uh, six uh, being led yeah. by you know, myself and others, yes. are basically completely opposed. Yes. And we are the largest of the, uh, pretty much the largest of the community centers. Yes. The other uh, centers, there's only 11 that are actually oh. at the table. Oh, okay. And two, uh, actually more than two of them yes. have said thanks, but no thanks. And, but the Parks Board keeps claiming everybody's on side, which is just a fallacy. Um, Marpole, for one, Marpole yes. uh, Oak Ridge Community Centre, uh, has said thanks and no thanks. They've left the table and are not accepting it. A Marpole must be uh, a place of huge uproar these days because driving, I went over to Victoria yesterday and driving at nine in the morning. You saw our signs. I, I saw the signs that say, uh, what does it say? It says no, stop. Re, uh, no rezoning, no forced rezoning in Marple. Right, exactly. Or stop, stop, the re, uh, stop Marple rezoning. So what we're getting out of this, help me if I'm off base here, but what I'm getting is a city hall and therefore a park board w which has its own master plan of the universe and it well. wants to sort of impose this on everybody and everything and they claim that there's a lot of consultation, but is there really? No, absolutely no consultation. Oops. The, the consultation's been a farce and a joke. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I got a laugh, yeah. and I call it hypocrite hall. I don't call it city hall anymore. Say it again. Hypocrite hall. That's good, hypocrite and hall. Because you, you had yeah. um, uh, the mayor come out just recently and say, you know, and profuse, oh, I'm, I'm devastated. We were not uh, consulted about the new bridge going over. Uh, I saw that today. And yeah. I thought to myself, yeah. wow, he's, he say, sounds so heartbroken about lack of consultation. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how the West End, Marpole, Hastings Sunrise, Mount Pleasant, yes. and all of the other yeah. uh, so, and community centers and communities feel. Yeah. And yet he has the audacity to come on TV and say this. It's ridiculous. Let, let's, say, let's say that mm -hmm. uh, uh, the park board is successful and they somehow force you and the other five rogues, the six rogues. I take uh, exception yeah, to that. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the, the newspaper speaking. That somehow they force you all to shut the hell up and get out of here and, and be quiet and we're going to do what we're going to do. Let's say they do that. What do you think would be some immediate and then long-term uh, consequences? Immediately, yeah. uh, there would be chaos because over the last 50, 80 years, the associations have purchased a vast array of the equipment being used currently in those centers. Like? Well, because the associations uh, run all the programs and services, right. we are the ones who purchase all the equipment. All the mats, the clocks, the chairs, the tables, the computers. Right, the books. The, the books. The, the badminton rackets. Whatever. The preschools. All the oh, preschools oh, okay. and yeah. daycares are yeah. run by the associations. Yeah. And that's why we have. they're highly subsidized, yeah. and this is where some of the membership fees go. Uh -huh. So our membership fees actually go to subsidize the preschool daycare programs, youth at risk programs, and seniors programs. Now, if that was to all stop tomorrow, yes. you could see a doubling in, in uh, fees easily. You could see... In daycares and preschools shutting down. Uh, you could see youth at risk programs shutting down. The grants that we write, we write thousands, tens of thousands of dollars worth of grants every year. And those grants cannot be, uh, cannot be acquired by the city. So Period. Who, so who is, who is going to do this? You know, I worked at Langara College mm -hmm. for a wonderful president uh, for several years. When she retired, we got a new president. Mm -hmm. And after a few months, the new president decided I wasn't one of his people. So, oh, he, yeah. so he bought out my contract, and I went, went away with a bunch of money in my pocket. He said that at least two of the programs that I had created, they were going to pick up. But of course, they depended on me to do them. 
Okay, so the people he handed them to just looked at this, didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So if the park board takes over these community centers and you've got someone who was really good at getting deals on, on mats and badminton rackets and tennis nets, who at the park board is gonna do that? Well, the parks board just gonna spend top dollar and then this is the problem. <laughs> the parks board, if this cup, yeah, if yeah. we had to make, requisition this cup, Yes. The park board would probably go to one of their listed suppliers and pay twice the cost. Lovely. And oh, because they, they operate like well, the Canadian because, Army. Well, no, they operate like yeah. a dictator. And you know what? And money's free because it comes from you and me. Yeah, four ninety five for a nut and bolt. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And you know what? The volunteers, on the other hand, we will basically go to people we know and say, listen, it's for your community. Right. Your kids, your grandparents will be using this community center. Yeah, give it to me or give it to me cheap. Yeah, exactly. Right. And this has happened time and time again through the entire city. And isn't that what mm -hmm. makes community associations? That stepping out of your comfort zone, going and asking the neighbor, the neighbor uh, hardware store to help you with something. Is, isn't it that participatory thing Absolutely. that creates the sinew of these operations? That's... Absolutely perfect word for it. We are the sinew that connects the community to itself. And we are the ones who connect our sister and brother communities to each other. And we, we acknowledge the problems before they become problems. We're the ones who start the seniors programs, the youth at risk programs, the late night basketball pickup. Uh -huh. And yeah. paid staff punch the clock. Most of them don't live in the neighborhood. Most of them don't live in the community. Get a paycheck and they leave because, well, it's a job. None of us are paid. Isn't, isn't ownership one of the key elements in the success of any human enterprise? Absolutely. Uh, one of the greatest economists in the world who's still alive, a Peruvian guy whose name I could never remember, mm -hmm. said that it doesn't matter mm -hmm. that, that people in Thailand or wherever are only paid a dollar to, to, to build Nike shoes that are sold for $200. He said the real issue is if they had part ownership in the company, and they got a dividend from their work, that, well, Th this then it wouldn't really be exploitation. This old card of yours. Yes, yes. This is a dividend. Yes. This is a, this is a tangible piece of belonging. Yes. And when somebody picks up, a, 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 well, this is a flex yeah. card. Yeah. You have a sense of belonging. And in many of the centers, we have seniors who say, I belong. I've been a member since. Absolutely, absolutely. And, to take that away from people is to literally tear apart the fabric of the community. And all you have to do, uh, uh, Jesse, we're gonna take a break, all you have to do is walk into any community center and you yeah. sense it, you feel it, you smell it, you taste it in the first four seconds you walk in, right? Well, that, yeah. absolutely. Okay, we take a little break. Our guest is Jesse Joel. Joel from uh, Hillcrest Community Center. And uh, we'll just uh, take a breather for a moment and uh, your opportunity to look at davidburner.com. We're always happy to hear from you. And also an opportunity for those lovely folks who support us here to say hello, uh, bringing you this program on Shaw Community Television, Cable 4, back in a minute. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of BC. Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. So this is the park board against the community associations part two because six months ago we had uh, Eric Harn from uh, Hastings. Thank you from Hastings. But uh, today our guest is uh, Jesse Joel from uh, Hillcrest Community Center. Okay, look, let's talk about some court battles because there are at least two that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a headline that says six associations begin court battle to maintain control. So are you really doing this? Absolutely. I'm, you, one, yeah. I'm one of the people who's sworn the affidavit okay. to start the whole thing off. So what is it? Basically, it is trying to maintain our autonomy and our connection to the community. 
so how do you do this? I mean, you, you, you I mean, what is your, what is your uh, injunction application against the board? What does it say? The inju- in a nutshell, yes. it is to uh, prevent the city from forcibly crushing uh, the community voice. In a sense, they are trying to eliminate membership. Well, eliminate the need for membership or the use of membership. And this was something they expressly said they wouldn't do. And now they're saying, yes, we're going to do it, with or without you, with or without your permission. The only problem is we have a joint operating agreement, the JOA, which has Uh been in place since 1979. With whom? With the City of Vancouver and Park Board. Oh. A legal document that states we have membership. And Uh these community centres, actually every community centre, has charged a membership, whether people know it or not, Yes. since the beginning, the very beginning. So 50, 80 years, this has always been the case. And, to, and they said it was under the guise of access and equity. Well, access and equity have never been an issue. What has been an issue yeah. is the city cutting funding to Parks Board and the Park Board neglecting community centers. And I call them, ne- they're not have not, they're neglected. Park the city board, cut funding to Park Board? Absolutely. Absolutely. So You're the looking, Park Board's looking for more income. Looking for more income, turning over manhole covers, and when they're not wasting money on uh, you know, yeah. schemes and harebrained ideas, yeah. uh, they come cap in hand saying, we want you to pay for this, that, Why and the would other. the city cut, uh, this isn't your responsibility, but I'm just curious, uh, why would the city cut funding to the park board? Oh, well, it was the new mantra, streamlining, um, oh, yeah. centralization. Yeah. And uh, we Stream- see how... The- streamlining and centralization, except, of course, where it comes to bicycles. Oh, well, <laughs> the bicycles aren't the problem. It's, yeah. the, it's the people and their... You know, it's like the one card. Yes. In principle, they're a great idea. Yeah. But how they're implemented is everything. And any great idea can be contorted and manipulated into something that's an absolute nightmare. It's a great idea to turn Vancouver into Amsterdam in many ways. <laughs> and one of them would be to have, you know, a bicycles that you can put a toonie in a machine and drive away with a bicycle. Great idea, except for the five guys who own bike shops at the corner of Georgia and Denman. Oh, yeah. Of course. We're going to be out of business. Well, that, and <laughs> you know what? And that was never addressed. Isn't, isn't it lovely to destroy business? So really, this is similar. Well, that, it's absolutely similar. And yes. I was actually at that park board meeting. Yes. And one of the things, the first thing I thought was, yeah. how did you, you're claiming poverty and, and, and lack of funds, yes. yet you find $6 million for this bike share program. Yes. You're putting the, uh, the business owners, private business owners, at, at hardship. Yes. And on top of that, you've denied at least two uh, communities that I know of a senior center that you, quote, don't have funding. And yeah. guess what? That's $6 million. You've got a permanent senior center yeah. at at least one of them. And, the, uh, and, the, and nobody's noticed that uh, uh, Amsterdam is flat oh. and Vancouver is full of hills. Oh, of course. Yeah. The only thing we Geography's share, never an issue the only thing we share with, with Amsterdam is that everybody is stoned. But that's, <laughs> but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> yeah. It's like Silly Hall. Yeah. So uh, now you've, you've uh, uh, sued, in effect, Absolutely. the park board. But the park board responded with legal action of its own by serving your associations with notices of termination. Yes. The first time, and this is, this is the biggest embarrassment for the city of Vancouver. Yes. We have cities from all across North America and the world contact yeah. us. Oh. As they see the Community Center and Community Center Association joint partnership as an extremely productive and effective way to deliver services. Absolutely. You know, where are you going to find a few hundred volunteers, many of them professionals, yes. to work for free and spend thousands, countless thousands of hours a year? Yes. doing things that you would have to pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for. So they, they come to, uh, to view and uh, learn from us. The City of Vancouver and the Park Board specifically held an in, uh, in-camera meeting behind closed doors with no public consultation. There's that theme again, no public consultation. Yes. And decided, held a vote to remove six of the largest and oldest centers in the city. Well, guess what? We're going to court over that in November. Uh, I think I believe it's November 18th or 19th. And so the fight. I hope it's the 18th because that's my birthday. Well, that, and then you'll be blessed. We'll, we'll, we'll ask the justice to move it forward one day. <laughs> move, move it to the 18th. <laughs> give it's, me a birthday it's gift. A, it's a magic day. But yeah. the other question in this whole uh, yeah. affair are where are the other presidents? Yes. There are other presidents of other associations. And where are they? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. Your silence is. Tra- is yeah, Unbelievable. It's deafening. It's Their deafening. silence is deafening. So let, that leads us to the other curious thing. Mm-hmm. You sent me a lot of documents over the last few days, which I've read. I didn't print them out or bring them because I found a lot of it kind of baffling. 
are you saying in the, in the goodies that you sent me, do these documents claim in effect that the city of Vancouver and or the park board mm -hmm. planted uh, 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 one of their own people in association meetings to try to ruin or discredit or, or discombobulate you folks? There is a, um, a breach of privacy claim Yes, that's been put in against uh, a um, a president, uh, the president of uh, of Trout Lake. Yes, and that's a legal matter or privacy issue going yeah. forward. And yes. it's it was put in by another president. Yes, the interesting thing is that it was a clear conflict of interest, as many people cited. Yet the city and the individual failed to even tell anyone about it. And uh, actually, when Nikki Sharma, the commissioner, was actually pushed on it, yes. said, well, it's not my concern. It's not my job. Well, you're a lawyer, first off. Yes. You're a park board commissioner. Yes. And I think a clear duty to make sure that those representing both sides are not in any, have no conflict. Yes. Yet, and also that no harm is done. And that anybody. no harm is done. Yeah. And this isn't a personal business. Well, this is it. And the, the potential for harm is unimaginable, un unimaginable in terms of the damage to seniors programs, childcare programs, youth at risk programs. Yet that is something that's kind of been brushed aside and buried under the carpet. One of the things you showed me was an email from someone who I gather is in fact an employee of the city or the park board. And, and the email was, was kind of gruesome, be going on about, you know, how this person was intent on making hash of other people and so on. So, so what all of this suggests in the most ugly and untoward way is that the park board and or the city is playing dirty. Absolutely. The park board and the city have been playing dirty from the get-go, in my opinion. Um, they, are, they should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, like I said, this is hypocrite hall. They say, espouse one thing and claim values and high morals, yet turn around and at the first chance will try to, try to discredit or destroy something that's been around for 50, 80 years. Isn't there somewhere out there, somewhere in our community, can we not find a, 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 an intelligent, useful, dispassionate adjudicator? Can we not, Jesse, can't we find someone who can sit down in a room with you and the mayor, say, or you and I, I think of my friend Constance Barnes, who's on the park board, and say, look, this is silly. This is getting out of hand. How can we resolve this to the benefit of the citizens of Vancouver? Absolutely. Because that's, we have to keep our eye on the prize. The, the prize is the citizens of Vancouver. The prize of the programs and services. Exactly. And in the court of uh, Justice Berner, yes. <laughs> I, we're being heard. Yes. But in the court of, uh, in the in the well, in the court of our our good mayor, Mr. Uh, Robertson, yeah. they don't want to hear it. They don't want to discuss it, and more pro importantly, they don't want to acknowledge it. Their goal is to make sure that this does not stick, quote unquote, let it go away. And you know, as we've all know, the PR division of City Hall keeps growing by leaps and bounds, spin, 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 and how this you know how the city and the parks board can justify spending, we've heard up towards of a million dollars on the production and rollout of the one card, and then another upwards of a million dollars to subsidize free uses on it to get it out the door. This, see, this is the other joke of the whole thing. They said, oh, it's so successful. We've given out 80,000 or 90,000 of them. Well, yeah. each card is loaded with three free visits. That's right, yeah. Well, each uh, visit is approximately $5, right. so $15 a card. That's a lot of money. Well, that's over a million bucks. What's your game plan? We're almost out of time. What's your game plan mm -hmm. if, for example, the city's injunction is somehow successful? It says, folks, get out of Dodge. Will you leave? We won't leave. We'll fight till the bitter end. <laughs> we will fight till the bitter end because yeah. what's at stake is not, it's not this generation. Yeah. It's the future generation. Yeah. Are, are you paid? No. None of us are paid. You, you have a job of your own. We all you're, have you're jobs all of our own. You have, you have a busy life. You got a wife, you got kids, you got yeah. parents, you got a life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is something you do because you're passionate about it and it's fun. And Well, it's, yeah, you yeah. know what? I wouldn't say fun. Yeah. Uh, I would say I feel that if, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. Martin Luther King 50 years ago had the march 
And yeah. one, of the, one of the things he said you know, so long ago was, it's not the words of my oppressor that hurts. What hurts is the silence of my friends. Mm. And if I don't speak up now, yeah. if others don't speak up now, yeah. who will speak up? And maybe it's that 90-year-old woman down the street, or maybe it's that single mom with the, with the young child you know, who has autism, who ha has any number of conditions. Yeah. Or maybe, you know what, maybe it's that person who is disabled or co recovering from addiction or people, mental illness. People, people love to talk about people falling between the cracks. You know, they, it's an easy expression. And yet they don't recognize that one of the jobs that community centers do is they're the kind of place that picks people up. Here's the face. Yeah. yeah. Here's the face. And yeah. on the yeah. new cards, yeah. there are no faces. There are no pictures. You're well, a number. You're a number now, David. And you know what? This is a perfect example. Without a face, you fall between the cracks. You're just a number. As long as you pay, as long as the city gets their money, they're happy. Without a face, the day would never end. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Jesse, Joel, fabulous, wonderful stuff. Thanks so much. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Next week, um, the day before our show, there will be a march in Victoria uh, organized by a group called Dying with Dignity, and I think you've all read enough uh, to know what the subject is about. It's about the right to die, and we'll have uh, one of the folks uh, who is uh, going to be at that rally will join us fresh from that event and uh, share that story. So thanks for being with us. It's been terrific, uh, uh, wonderful to uh, have you here today, wonderful to have our guest. Uh, join us again soon here on Shaw Community Television, 24. Good night. Thank you.